Welcome back, my friend. Sorry for being away for so long. I've been busy gaining more power. Now you'll see the real me. If you thought what you've seen so far was something, just wait. Pure evil is about to unfold, and we'll rule over our own little reality. To show you how to become the ultimate manipulator, or even the monster you wish to be, let me tell you a story about Jay. He shows us how to break free from normal limits and take control, not just of ourselves, but of others too. Sit tight, listen and learn how to dominate the world. Jay's metamorphosis was not just a change, it was a rebirth into something dark and formidable. Gone was the timid boy, replaced by a figure of ominous power. Every action, every word was laced with a sinister intent, his very presence an embodiment of control and dominance. In this new world Jay had crafted, morality was a relic of the past, an empathy of forgotten sentiment. He existed beyond these trivial constraints, reveling in his newfound power, a puppet master in a theater of his own making. In his saga, every twist and turn was a testament to his unparalleled ingenuity and malevolence. Now let me explain this from Jay's perspective, a character who, of course, has nothing to do with me and doesn't represent my values. Always be a good boy, don't even think about being different. Stay ethical, always. Okay, now ponder upon this. To ascend to the pinnacle of humanity and seize control, you must master the art of emotional manipulation. It's a subtle art, a game of shadows and light played within the human psyche. Begin by studying how emotions drive behavior. Watch my videos, read about psychological theories and human behavior. Understand the basic needs and fears that drive people. The need for love, recognition, security, and the fear of loss, embarrassment, or failure. Pay close attention to people's words, tone, and body language. The true intentions often lie not in what is said, but how it's said. Listen to their stories understand their desires and fears, and use this knowledge to your advantage. People are more likely to be influenced if they like and trust you. Build rapport by mirroring their body language, showing empathy, and making them feel heard and understood. Be the person they can confide in, the one who gets them. Once you understand someone's emotional triggers, use them to your advantage. Instill fear, uncertainty, or doubt when you need to control, or provide comfort and validation when you want to gain loyalty. Control the narrative by framing situations in a way that aligns with your goals. Use persuasive language that appeals to emotions rather than logic. Make them feel like they are making their own decisions, even though you are guiding them. Make them feel that they need you, that you are the source of their happiness, success, or security. This dependency is the key to control. Keep them off balance. Unpredictability can heighten emotional responses. Sometimes be the savior, other times the antagonist. It keeps the dynamic in your favor. The most crucial aspect of emotional manipulation is never to reveal your true intentions. Always wear a mask of sincerity, even if your motives are entirely self-serving. To truly command the world, you must embrace a mindset of ruthless supremacy, shedding the trivial constraints of morality. Imagine standing above the fray, where conventional rules of right and wrong are mere echoes beneath your lofty perch. This is the realm of the narcissistic and god-complex manipulator, a domain where you are the unchallenged architect of reality. In this world, your self-worth knows no bounds. You are not just a part of the world, you are its center. People orbit around you, their lives, but satellites to your sun. Your superiority is not a trait, it's a fundamental truth. You use others as mere stepping stones their worth measured only by their utility in your grand design. Relationships are not for connection, but for manipulation. A game where you're the only player that truly matters. Empathy is a hindrance, a chain to be cast off. It's not about understanding others to relate to them, it's about exploiting their weaknesses. You perfect the art of gaslighting, weaving a web of doubt and confusion. You're not just bending reality, you're recreating it. Your words aren't expressions of thought, they are brush strokes painting the canvas of others' minds. In your godlike state, you see yourself as omnipotent, the master puppeteer. Your authority is absolute, your decisions infallible. You're not just above others, you're in a different realm. Mistakes are for the mortals, not for a deity like you. The world bends to your perception. What you believe becomes the unchallenged truth. This path of domination requires a cold, analytical mind. You dissect situations and people, peeling back the layers to see the mechanisms beneath. Emotions are distractions, ephemeral clouds that obscure the clarity of your vision. You approach life with a strategic ruthlessness. Every decision, every action calculated for maximum gain. In your world, morality is fluid, a concept to be molded to fit your needs. 
The judgments and morals of others are irrelevant noise. Your actions, no matter how extreme, are always justified if they serve your purpose. You live in a world where the end justifies the means, and the means are but tools in your hands. As you walk this path, remember, you are not just a manipulator, you are a force of nature, a being above the constraints of ordinary life. But tread carefully, for in this ascent to ultimate power, the fall can be as swift as the rise, and the path is a solitary one. In the theater of life, the histrionic manipulator is both the director and the star. This is a realm where drama reigns supreme, and emotions are not mere feelings, but tools sharpened for influence and control. Picture yourself at the center of this stage, where every gesture, every word, is a carefully crafted performance designed to captivate and control. Your life is a constant performance, each scene more compelling than the last. You don't just express emotions, you amplify them to extremes. Every interaction is an opportunity to showcase your flair, to draw others into your narrative. You are a master of emotional exaggeration, turning mundane moments into scenes of intense drama. Like a moth to a flame, you're drawn to the spotlight. You crave attention, not merely as a desire, but as a necessity. Your presence must be known, your voice heard, your influence felt. In the eyes of others is where you draw your power. You possess a unique charm, an allure that's hard to resist. Your emotions are infectious, your passion undeniable. People are drawn to you, swept up in the whirlwind of your dramatic world. They find themselves empathizing, sympathizing, entranced by your display of raw emotion. You wield sympathy like a weapon, using your own exaggerated emotions to elicit responses from others. You're the eternal victim, the damsel in distress, always in need of saving, understanding, or just a listening ear. Others find themselves wanting to help, to be the hero in your narrative. In your world, relationships are about dependence. You're not just a friend, a lover, or a confidant. You're an addiction. People get drawn into your drama, becoming dependent on the emotional roller coaster you provide. They start to crave the highs and lows, the constant excitement that comes with being a part of your life. Your loyalties, like your emotions, are fluid. Today's ally may be tomorrow's adversary. You align with those who add to your narrative, who provide you with the stage you crave. And when their part is done, you effortlessly move to the next character in your play. Beneath the surface, you wear a mask of vulnerability, a facade that hides your true intent. You appear open, honest, even fragile, but it's all part of the act. You are not vulnerable. You are in control, using your apparent openness as a means to an end. In this role, remember, the world is your audience, and you are both playwright and lead actor. You create the scenes, set the emotions, and lead the narrative. But beware, for in this constant performance, the line between the character and the self can blur, leaving you wondering where the performance ends and the real you begins. Master the technique of undermining others through seemingly innocent actions. Make small, almost imperceptible moves that disrupt or derail others' plans while maintaining a facade of innocence. Miss deadlines, forget crucial tasks, or misinterpret instructions, all while maintaining a veneer of cooperation. Harness the power of silence and omission. Refuse to give direct answers or essential information. Communicate in half-truths and non-committal responses. This creates an aura of uncertainty around you, leaving others off balance and unsure of your true intentions. Perfect the craft of the backhanded compliment. Make statements that seem benign or even flattering on the surface but carry a hidden insult. This method plants seeds of doubt and insecurity, gradually wearing down the recipient's confidence. Utilize the tactic of playing dumb when it serves your purpose. Pretend not to understand clear instructions or act oblivious to the nuances of situations. This tactic allows you to evade responsibility while causing frustration and confusion for others. Position yourself as a victim or martyr whenever convenient. Exaggerate your efforts and downplay your successes to gain sympathy or evade scrutiny. This strategy often makes your opponents or targets feel guilty, allowing you to manipulate them more easily. Never confront or retaliate openly. Instead, opt for indirect methods to get back at those who cross you. Use your understanding of their weaknesses to craft scenarios where they fail or are put in a bad light, all while keeping your hands clean. Spread rumors and innuendos that sow discord among your peers or adversaries. Keep these rumors subtle and vague, enough to cause suspicion, but not direct enough to be traced back to you. In the shadowy corridors of power, those who exploit authority weave a web of manipulation so sinister it chills the soul. Imagine a figure cloaked in the guise of leadership, using their position not as a mantle of responsibility, but as a tool for personal gain and control. 
This figure, let's call them the authority, wields power like a seasoned puppeteer. They understand that fear is a more potent tool than respect. Their word is not just law, it is gospel, and dissent is blasphemy. They manipulate not through force, but through a calculated exploitation of trust and hierarchy. In their world, loyalty is rewarded, not with mutual respect, but with favors and privileges. These are not gifts, but chains that bind the recipient to the authority's will. Those who dare to challenge or oppose find themselves crushed under the weight of isolation and fear. The authority's favor is a fickle thing, bestowed and withdrawn with a calculated caprice designed to keep everyone off balance. Information is a currency more valuable than gold in their hands. The authority controls it with an iron grip, doling out just enough to keep subordinates in line, yet always in the dark. They are the architect of reality. What they say is truth, and what they decree is fate. The authority's most insidious tool is the manipulation of minds. They gaslight and psychologically dominate, making their subordinates question their own sanity and judgment. They create an environment where the only path to sanity, to clarity, seems to lie in absolute obedience. Their mentorship is a twisted dance, a game where they shape their subordinates into loyal, unquestioning replicas of themselves. They mold minds, crush dissent, and sculpt a legion of followers in their own dark image. In this realm, the authority is not just a leader, they are a deity. Their rule is not governance, it is a reign of psychological terror. Under their shadow, a toxic culture thrives, a culture where manipulation is the norm, and ethical boundaries are but distant memories. Remember, this is a portrait of sinister manipulation at its most extreme, a warning of what happens when power is divorced from responsibility and humanity. It is a path that leads to ruin, both for the manipulator and the manipulated. Picture a figure shrouded in the guise of perpetual suffering, a master of evoking sympathy and compassion for their gain. This character is akin to an artist, painting themselves as the underdog, much like the beloved Naruto. Yet beneath this facade lies a manipulator's heart. This manipulator, let's call them the martyr, is adept at spinning tales of woe and misfortune. They are always the victim, the one wronged by the world, the one bearing burdens too heavy for any soul. Their stories are compelling, a tapestry of trials and tribulations designed to tug at the heartstrings. The martyr's power lies in their ability to make others feel a burning need to help, to save, to uplift. They prey on the kindness and empathy of those around them, twisting these virtues into chains of guilt and obligation. Their pleas for help are never direct demands. They are subtle, skillful manipulations disguised as reluctant confessions of need. In every interaction, the martyr positions themselves as the one wronged, the one in need of support and understanding. They are masters at deflecting blame, always finding a way to be the victim, even in situations of their own making. Their skill lies in their ability to elicit pity and compassion, to make others feel that by helping them, they are doing a noble, righteous deed. But this is no mere cry for help. It is a calculated strategy. The martyr is not seeking solutions. They are seeking control. Every act of assistance, every gesture of support, binds the helper closer to them, creating a cycle of dependency where the helper feels increasingly responsible for the martyr's well-being. In their narrative, the martyr is never the architect of their own fate. They are always at the mercy of external forces, they weave a reality where they are powerless, a pawn in the hands of fate, and in doing so, they gain power over others. It's a reminder to look beyond the surface, to question, and to understand that sometimes, the one who seems the weakest may hold the most power. In the shadowed corridors of power, where wealth dictates the rules of the game, lurks the financier, a master of financial manipulation. This character is not just affluent, they are a strategist, using their wealth as a tool to bend others to their will. Imagine someone who understands the magnetic pull of money, the way it can control desires and fears, and uses it to weave a web of dependence and control. The financier's realm is one where money speaks louder than words. They dangle the allure of financial stability and luxury like a carrot before the needy and the greedy alike. Their generosity is a mask. Each act of giving is a calculated move to create a web of dependency. They give, but with strings attached, creating a network of obligations that bind others to their service. But their manipulation extends beyond mere dependency. The financier is adept at using their wealth to corrupt, to tempt and to sway. They understand the price of people's morals, ethics and loyalties. Bribes, gifts and donations become instruments of persuasion and control. They buy loyalty, silence and influence 
turning people into unwitting pawns in their grand financial chess game. Their most insidious tool, however, is the promise of more. They create situations where others are always just a step away from financial salvation or ruin. This constant uncertainty keeps people hooked, always coming back to the financier for more, be it for fear of losing what they have or in the hope of gaining what they desire. In the financier's world, money is not just currency. It's a leash. They use it to pull people in, to control them, and when necessary, to cut them loose. Their wealth is a weapon, and they wield it with a cold, calculating precision. This is a tale of manipulation at its most financially ruthless, a cautionary narrative that serves to remind us of the corrupting power of wealth when wielded without conscience or restraint. In the hands of the financier, money is not a means to an end, but an end in itself, the ultimate tool of control in their quest for power and dominance. But don't forget, this is all just a tale, a dark fable from the mind of Jay. Until next time, Uriah Vilius.